Well, hello everyone. Welcome back or just welcome if you're new here. I am really excited that I pretty much have to say that almost every week. Now, I'm getting new subscribers. So welcome. I hope you enjoy. Oh, excuse me. I hope you stick around. I've realized lately that I don't introduce myself a lot at the beginning of every video and now that I have new people coming in, I probably should. I'm Carrie. I'm the DNA geek. This is Lexi. She thinks she co-hosts. Um, a lot of people are here for her. Well, they come for the stitching, stay for the dog. Um, she thinks that she belongs here. She thinks she's a co-host and must examine everything. And if you watched last week's video with the, the turning in circles debacle, I have left the pillows exactly how she had them last week. So hopefully we'll avoid that mess. Um, I don't have a ton for you this week, uh, and you'll see why as we get into things. Hi. Oh, you're hot. Why don't you go downstairs and get a drink? It's really hot here. It's like in, yesterday it was almost 95, and today I don't think it's quite that warm, but it's still pretty hot here, and I don't wear a fur coat all the time. A little bit of a personal update, you might notice. Lexi is wearing a new collar. Uh, it's not exact, actually new. I've had it for six months. I just finally got around to putting it on her. Um, and every time I would watch back videos, I would look at that old collar that was practically ripped off so that you couldn't see what it originally was anymore <laughs> and think, oh my gosh, people must think I don't take any care of my dog whatsoever. Um, but I have had a collar. The factor was the time to get the tag on, I hate doing that. So now she has her new collar and you don't look like a hobo anymore, right? You good? Oh, I know what she wants. She brought this up with her. This is one of her favorite toys. Um, she likes anything that looks remotely like a ball, but it doesn't have to look like a ball for it to be something that you can throw and fetch. Um, pretty much anything that is her toy will be thrown and fetched, and I don't know if you can see her right now, uh, but she is poised and ready for me to throw this. So, I'm gonna throw this. Look at me. You're not going to. I'm gonna throw this, but you better not knock over that pile of stuff on the end of the bed going to get it, okay? So everybody say goodbye to Lexi, because I think she's done for the day. And she only knocked over one thing, so not bad. Um, I have a list today. It's in no particular order, so it probably won't help at all. But, um, recap from last week, some feedback that I got from last week's video. Yes, I am in fact weird. No one else seems to have theme songs. Um, I, but it, it seemed to be an enjoyable and entertaining kind of weird rather than a scary weird. So I'll take it. Um, a lot of people did say, and I have this happen also, where you will associate a, a whip or a project with something that you were watching or listening to a, a lot while you were working on it. And that happens, but when I talk about a theme song, I talk about, it's like nothing to do with that project. Like I told you, Cinderella's is Once Upon a Dream from Sleeping Beauty. I have not watched Sleeping Beauty in, probably could be measured in decades. And maybe four or five years ago, someone danced a Viennese waltz to it at one of the showcases. Not me, someone else. So I don't know where that song came from. But that is one of the two theme songs for that whip. Um, surprisingly, the one thing I think everybody probably assumes, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's not true. Defying Gravity does not have a theme song. You thought it was Defying Gravity. It's not. I don't. Sometimes I get a song or two from Wicked stuck in my head when I work on it, but it's not ever the same song. Um, the most recent two have been wonderful and thank goodness. It's never been Defying Gravity. I don't know. That's why, I don't know. They choose their own theme songs and I have no control over it. Uh, another thing, thank you for the feedback on... Uh, uh, interval of time between um, videos. 
and uh, whether or not to do a whip parade, uh, the inter interval was pretty much evenly divided. There are people that said they like having the regular posts, and there are people that said they thought two weeks was better. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to continue to do weekly for the rest of June, and then July, I think, is going to be a good time to test drive the once every two weeks, because the first week of July, I'm pretty much going to be gone. Um, I'm going to be out of state for five days, so I'm not going to get a lot of um, stitching done, and I'm also going to be, normally I would record on Sunday night, which is the 4th, and I'm going to be out of town until the 6th. So I think that that'll be a good, I'll do the rest of June. The last, hi, are you coming back? Okay, well, get comfortable. Um, I think the last video for June, no. Next week, I will do a mid-year whip parade because that seemed to be something that some people wanted to see. Um, I'm not going to do it the last week because I'm going to be out of town, and I thought that might be a great thing to do on a week that I don't have to stitch, but then I realized I have to edit it. I have to find starting and finishing photos for every one of my whips. That's not going to be a good thing to do, I'm going to want to do after I've been in the car for six hours. Please not again. I left them right where they were last time. I didn't touch them. Just lay down. I really hope this isn't gonna start being an every video thing. Um, apparently, the, the optimal comfort pattern changes from time to time. But at least this time it wasn't quite as bad. Yes, you're a good girl. You're just kind of annoying. Are you... <laughs> Don't swear on videos. Are you kidding me? Could you go elsewhere? I like you too, but seriously, dog. Um... I'm going to go ahead and jump right into whips, and hopefully she's going to let me do stuff. What is wrong? What is wrong with you lately, huh? She's going to be really mad when she finds out the trip that I'm going on at the beginning of July. She's not coming. You're going to Auntie Cat Lady's house. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to spend five days there. You don't know it yet, you're not gonna be happy. Actually, you might, she loves my friend's cats. She comes home with bad habits though. Remind me and maybe sometime we'll tell the story about the bad habits that she picks up at Auntie Cat Lady's house. Um, but we're here to talk about whips. Like I said, I don't have a whole lot for you today and the reason is gonna become really apparent in about 10 minutes, depending on how long I babble. First up is in this house. And the last time you saw it, it was here. And I really didn't get a whole lot done on this one. Um, pretty much, literally all I got done was I finished the U and part of the S. <laughs> it's about a hundred stitches. I worked on this one one day. Um, because I got going on other things and it did not get alternated, but it's going to get more attention later. So, not very exciting. Not a lot to talk about. Uh, yeah, that's about it. And maybe it won't be ten minutes until we get to the next thing. Do you want, I mean, I guess I can go ahead and tell you the ones I'm currently working on, whether or not they have theme songs. This one doesn't have a theme song. Um, this one does. We talked about this one last week. This is the Mandala Cinderella. And the last time that I showed it to you, it looked something like this. And I really hope you cannot hear those kids outside. The, 
the townhomes in my community, the way they're set up, like things echo and amplify. And I specifically waited until everybody left the pool because there were kids like screaming. And I'm all for kids being outside and playing and go for go go outside voice. But I mean, at one point I literally the Okay, tongue not working. Um, I literally thought that someone was in trouble because all I could hear was someone screaming, please, please, please. And it turned out that it was a kid who was getting dumped by his friend. And I'm just like, I mean, I thought somebody was in some sort of trouble. And so I really, I'm all for outside voices, but I feel like screaming, especially in a crowded area like this is a bit much, but off on my soapbox. Anyway, I'm hoping that the echo is not too loud and that you cannot hear what's going on outside with the playing and the kids and the yelling as much as I can. But if you can, sorry, it's June, kids are outside playing. Um, Cinderella. So, I got a little bit more done on this one and the little bit that I got done, I actually am really pleased with what, how it turned out. Here we go. So the thing that made a huge difference on this one is the white and the pinks that I went and filled in right here. So that white, now her waist is defined and now most of her arm is defined. Um, yeah. And currently the color I'm working on is this uh, teal blue in here. There's another stripe of it down here. And then I think there is some more like up here and then I'll be done with that color. And then I'll move on to filling in the next color on, on her torso. And to, as a reminder, how I'm doing this is I'm taking, I'm working my way down this page. So I'm going to find, I'll find the next blank spot on this page and whatever color that is, unless it is the white or the yellow, uh, I will try to fill in all of that color on the entire page. until I get to, um, until I get all the colors done. And then the white and the yellow, I'm kind of just doing like a strand of it. When that comes up to be the next color, I, I just do a strand of it because that white literally runs and in veins through the entire thing. So, um, it would take a lot of counting and a lot of work to get all of that white done at once. So I'm not going to do that. And the same thing with the yellow. The yellow is just in small spots. Like most of these empty spots in here are all the yellow. Um, so there's a lot of it and it's in a lot of tiny little spaces and it's going to take a lot of um, stitching. So. I don't want to do all that boring, tedious stuff all at once, so I'm kind of filling that in as it goes. And then the, the colors that have the larger amounts and the bigger blocks, those are what I'm filling in as I go. So there's Cinderella. So pretty. I don't even know if you can see that where I'm holding it. There. Um, so that's Cinder. Big plans for her this month. I'll tell you about them in a second. The next one up is the big guy, is Deal Struck. Um, this is the one that I tried to get about 100 stitches on every day. Uh, I have not stitched on it yet today. I probably won't, which means I'll do 200 tomorrow, and so it'll work out in the wash. But when you last saw it, it was here and now really starting to see some development on this one. So here we go. Um, I got this column all done and I've started on this column. Uh, as I predicted, things have started slowing down because I've started adding some bigger blocks of color. This is all new uh, up over here. I think actually this is new as well. Um, what I'm starting to do now with the hand 
is I'm starting to work my way over so I can define the edges of page two so that when I'm done with page one, I'll know what's, where to go. But as these get bigger, uh, the amount of black that I'm covering in a single day is going down. So I am still predicting it is gonna take me another month to finish page one. So it'll probably be mid-July before I finish all of this black on page one and start in earnest on page two. Um, which is pretty much all hand. Uh, the size of this hand, I just can't <laughs> fathom. I mean, this this is the pinky. So this is the, the, the shortest of the fingers. And Sebastian has long fingers. Um, so I think this hand is probably at least one more page wide. And when I first started working on it, I was like, these colors are really weird. But when you realize that that is like a small bit of this hand, um, I think they're going to blend a little bit better than I initially had worried about. Um, I'm going to trust the pattern designer and we're going to see what happens. So that's about it for this one. I'm going to continue on the way that I'm going, uh, which means black color, black color, black color all the way across and down for at least the next month, probably even longer than that. Uh, because as I've said before, uh, this whole section right here is also all black. So I'm gonna be able to keep doing that black color alternating even as I get onto page two. I'm toying with maybe doing two strands of black to every one strand of color for a little while, just to see how that goes. So that means there would be days that I wouldn't work on color at all, but I'm not finding the black because it's going so fast. I'm not finding it as boring right now as I thought that I would. So I might experiment with that. I don't know. This is 3.71% complete. I have plenty of time to experiment with the way I work on it. Still on track for November 2026. Ouch, that hurts to even say. So that's all my whips. Is there something missing? It's because I have a finish. I'm so excited. Two weeks early, two weeks early. Um, but this is defying gravity and I'm not gonna post a picture for you because you're gonna see what the finished product looks like in just a second. But if you remember, are you here to steal my thunder? Really? Rude. Move, don't step on that. All right, you do you, boo. Um, Everything I was thinking about just went completely out of my head. Um, I was talking about defying gravity. Oh, yes. The last time I saw you a week ago, here's where it was. And as I predicted, since I did not go to my dad's this weekend, um, I finished it. So without further ado, here we go. I'm so excited! This is the single biggest project that I've ever finished. It's 15,000 stitches full coverage. Uh, it is, if you are new here and you haven't heard me talk about it ad nauseum and you're not sick of it yet, it is a gift for my boss um, who has been my supervisor at my current job since I started there 11 years ago, and we bonded over the fact that we both love Wicked. And um, a few years ago, I made a bunch of stitches for some other people at work, and I felt like I needed to make her one too. Um, because even though we've always had that work relationship where we don't socialize outside of work that often, unless it's in a large group, um, we're kind of friends, but she's still my boss. 
So I wanted to do something nice for her. Uh, and this is it. And I'm super proud of it. Uh, like I said, because it is the biggest thing I have done to date. Uh, I haven't decided how I want to finish it yet. I'm thinking about maybe um, getting it professionally framed because with the full coverage, if I don't, um, I've talked before with my finishing about how I'm not really good at getting things centered and straight. And with it being full coverage, I think if it's not centered or straight, you're really gonna notice it. Um, so I might just want someone else to do that for me. And plus it's a milestone finish for me and I kind of feel like it deserves a little bit of extra treatment even though I'm not keeping it. So, but there it is. I think I'm more excited about that one than I was about Sebastian and that's hard to do because I love Sebastian. So, now that that's done, where are we at with plans? Because that was supposed to be 125 stitches a day for all of the month of June. Uh, moving into that priority position, I think is going to be Cinderella. And I haven't done the math, but I'm aiming for an end of July finish on Cinderella. And I think the last time I checked the math on that, it's 150 stitches a day. So, with this, and with Cinderella, that could be challenging because of all of the small, um, because it's linen, Ugh. it's um, lots of small blocks of color and frequent changes. Uh, so it's gonna take longer than Defying Gravity and Sebastian did where they were larger, large chunks of, of single color and so they stitched up really fast. Um, but yeah, I think Cinderella is going to be my next priority. I'm going to keep doing what I had been doing until this week, until I caught the finish fever with um, Defying Gravity with uh, We Do Disney, which is every other day I'm going to try to get 100 stitches on it. It's it's the third priority. So priority one is Deal Struck, getting my 100 stitches on that. Priority two will be my 150 stitches on Cinderella. Priority three will be my 100 stitches on the two other gifts, and I'll show you what gift number two is um, here in a second. And then priority four is still going to be probably stitch alongs. I might take a couple days off and stitch a palette cleanser. I have a couple ideas for that, but something little quick, little and quick and get it out. Um, I might do that before I jump into Cinderella whole hog, we'll see. I have to do the math and see exactly how many stitches per day I need on Cinderella anyway. Ah, but the other gift that I am now pulling down since, since uh, deal, blah, Defying Gravity is done. The next one I'm gonna pull down is Grimm's Fairy Tales. And this one is a gift for my niece and I would love to have it done by Christmas this year. Um, it's not one of my particular favorites to work on. It's my oldest whip. Um, and the reason is a lot like Cinderella, it is small areas of color with a lot of color changing, so it doesn't stitch very quickly. Um, and when I had Defying Gravity and Sebastian and some of the other things, I knew that if I just put some focused effort in, I could get a lot of them done quickly. Um, I didn't want to work on Grimm's, but now I'm going to work on Grimm's. So here is where it's at. Uh, this is not quite halfway done. I'm working up here in the corner on Hansel and Gretel. I'll move that in a little bit closer so you can see Hansel and Gretel is not quite done. Uh, when I get done with that, that will be halfway. That will be six out of the 12 months of releases for this one. Um, so yeah, then I will have to do, let me see if I can remember what they all are. Um, Rapunzel, Cinderella, the Pied Piper of Hamelin, Rumpelstiltskin, 
the little star girl I think I don't know what that one exactly is um, and I can't remember the sixth one anyway so this is what I'm going to start adding. Try to do 100 stitches on this on alternating days with uh, We Do Disney. And this one is on uh, the kit fabric that came with it from Clouds Factory. This was the 20, 20 stitch along for them. Uh, and it is Picture This Plus Jade. I think the only other colored one, um, Cinderella, this is an unnamed uh, fabric games color from Mystic Fabrics. Oh yes, and We Do Disney, that is um, 16 Count Midnight Gray from Zweiger. So, that is my whips, that is my plans. I think that's all I wanted to say about any of those. I'm not used to having to look at paper. Um, we'll move on to haul. And I don't have as much haul as I normally would like, or as I would have liked, and I will tell the story about that as I go, but boils down to it's all Crafty Rogue Gamer and Mad Morty's fault. So yeah, it's all your fault, you two. Actually, I'll just go ahead and tell the story right now. It doesn't matter if I write things down. I am still going to just say things as they pop into my head. So, um, so I'm just going along minding my own business, watching FlossTube, flipping through Instagram, and I happen to see a post from Mad Morty on Instagram where she's picked up the World of Cross Stitching magazine and there was an Ann Stokes dragon in it. I love it. And she blames Crafty Road Gamer. So then I'm watching Crafty Rogue Gamer's floss tube. And predictably, she pulls out the magazine and also shows it. And so now I've seen this dragon twice and I've got to have it. The problem is it's a UK magazine. And I don't know if you can tell from my voice and the way I talk that I don't live in the UK. So, Today, yesterday and today, I went off on a trek. And I didn't go like all over town because Indianapolis is a small city. So I could have gone many more places than I did. I pretty much stayed on my side of town, but I went all over it. I went to all of my haunts and it was dangerous and it was bad. And it resulted in me spending a lot of money. Um, but anyway, so my quest to find this magazine. So I stopped at my local Joanne Fabrics and they had the World of Cross Stitching, but they have the June issue and the one I want is the July issue. So that was strike one, but I still spent $30 at Joanne's while I was there. So let me show you what I got. It's nothing terribly exciting. I got more finishing stuff. Um, these were on sale. So I got a 10 piece, 10 by 10 stretched canvas. I, I have a couple of, uh, of pieces that I want to FFO and they needed 10 by 10s and I was having a hard time finding 10 by 10 frames that I liked that didn't cost a small fortune. So I thought I would try the, um, stretching them on a gallery canvas and we'll see how that goes. So I did that. Would you get out of there? To do that, I was going to need this. Oi, stop. I also got some 
flosses and some other things. I got another uh, mounting board because I have one, uh, if you'll remember, when I mounted paw prints, I decided I wanted to do that in an eight by 10 when I'd bought the supplies for the five by seven. So this is the mounting board to replace the one that I used on paw prints that was meant for another project. Then on the way out of there, I noticed that there was a new Dollar Tree opening across the, across the street from Joann's. So I went in there and got the frame and some new ribbon to go rest of my new finishing stuff. So, so I spent all that money that I wasn't planning to because I was looking for the stupid magazine that I don't need, but I do need. So that was no such luck. So then today I got up and I decided I was going to try again. So I went to Michael's and there was, they don't even have that magazine. And then I made a very dangerous decision that could have gone very wrong very quickly because I've met me. Um, I decided to try some bookstores and that's dangerous because I usually don't leave bookstores empty handed. Um, and the only reason I did today was because the one copy they had of volume 29 of Black Butler had been shoved. Somebody had shoved it back into the shelf and the cover was bent. But if that had been in shape, I would have bought four volumes of manga. Only one of Black Butler, um, but there's two out of Yona that I don't have and one out of Blue Exorcist. And I hate buying manga because Manga's like, like gumballs. It's something, it's really small, it's really quick, it doesn't last long, it's not worth spending money on. Um, I get them from the library because if I get a volume of manga, I can finish it in two hours if I sit down and just do nothing else. So it's not really an effective way to spend my money. But I almost bought four volumes today, and that's not even counting. There was at least another hundred dollars worth of books that I put back on the shelves. So I had strength, but it could have gone super, super wrong that I walked into a bookstore. Two bookstores. That could have been a very bad thing for my wallet. Um, and anyway, Barnes & Noble did not have the world of cross-stitching. And Books A Million did, but it was the June issue. So I'm going to have to either try to remember and go back and check in July and hope that I can be strong again, or I found a couple places that I could order it online, or just not buy it. I could be strong. Anyway, so that was, that's all of my haul that is all Crafty Rogue Gamer and Mad Morty's fault. I have a couple other things that are totally my fault. I completely take responsibility for them. Uh, the first thing that came up is my, I guess I shouldn't say came up. The first thing that arrived is my uh, most recent installment of Tiny Modernist Zodiac Stitch Along. Uh, part six is Cancer. So there that is. Get a little close up of our little crab. I want to get back to this one relatively quickly, so I need to get my butt in gear on some of these Christmas gifts so that I can do other things for a change. My very first project bag ever arrived, uh, and I got it from the 805 Stitcher. And so here it is. Here's the back. It's all flamingos. Are we surprised? Here's the front with my lovely thank you note that is currently upside down. Um, but yeah, my lovely thank you note from the 805 Stitcher. I just love the inside fabric on this too, that pink. And of course, 
Uh, she always sends a free needle minder with all of her bags that is the same material. So here is, hopefully you can see, my flamingo head needle minder. And I don't know if you can see the pattern. There it is. So this is my very first project bag. I don't really need project bags um, because the way I store my whips, I don't store them individually anymore. Um, I don't store floss with individual projects anymore. Everything is pretty much in a master set. So I don't really need these except when I'm traveling. But when I travel, I usually take more than one whip. So I probably am still gonna need more than one of these eventually. That's my first one. And I've already tried, used it and I loved it. And then the next thing I got was uh, somebody on my Facebook who I met through the Stiatch along posted some of the Satsuma Street Halloween ornaments that I don't know how I had never seen, uh, but I hadn't. And so I had to order one of those kits and I'm gonna take this out of the bag so we don't get glare from the ring light. But it is a kit. Um, maybe I'm not gonna take it out of the bag because it doesn't seem to wanna come out. So, so this is Nevermore. And I actually love Poe. So um, The Raven's not one of my favorites, actually. It's my favorite, and I think I've said this before, is the Cask of Amontillado. Um, but uh, I love that his eye is a sequin. Um, and I can't wait to work on this one. So now I have two Halloween ornaments because I have this one and I have the Mill Hill ornament that I showed you a while ago. And eventually I might have enough that I try to do an ornament a month. But right now I only have two. And like I said, this is the kit. So it has literally everything in it that you need. Um, I love every single one of these, but I think eventually I'm going to have to get at least Miss Fortune and Goth Moth and Vampur. Um, I love those three a lot. And then the other four I like, but not as much, so they can wait longer. So that's all I have. That is whips that is planned that is haul that is everything stitchy so if that's what you're here for and you're ready to go and you don't need to hear any more of my babbling then i will tell you have a great week and i hope that i will see you next time um if you're interested in what i'm reading and i'm watching or you're ready for a life update stick around reading watching listening to we'll jump into that first Li uh reading Reading, listening to is kind of the same thing right now because I've been doing most of my reading on audiobooks. Um, I finished The Last Olympian, so I'm done with Percy Jackson until August, or well, I'm done with the Camp Half-Blood Chronicles till August when we start the Heroes of Olympus series. Uh, so right now what I'm listening to is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. A little bit about the plot uh, is about a woman who has been cursed that as soon as someone is out of sight, like so if they leave the room or if they go to sleep, um, as soon as she is out of their sight, they forget her. And she can't say her name, so she can't use her real name. Um, and so, and she's immortal. So this is kind of, the story spans like 300 years of her life. Um, 
and you know how you would live if because it's it's everything like she rented a room at an inn, and as soon as the innkeeper left, she forgot that she had rented the room to her, so she came in and accused her of stealing and threw her out. Like, how do you survive when, as soon as you're out of someone's sight, they no longer remember you? So it's a really interesting story so far, and I'm about halfway through it. Uh, I already have my next read on deck because it came through with... Um, my library subscription. Um, it's the next book in the Vampire Knitting Club series. I, I couldn't understand because they had one through six and then they had eight and nine, but they didn't have seven. Well, now they got seven, so it's waiting for me as soon as I finish Addie LaRue. And those are a lot of fun. They're just like little, like cozy mysteries with kind of a paranormal bent. Um, so yeah, that's what I am reading and, and or listening to. Uh, I'm very close. I'm like maybe 20 pages away from finishing my car book, which is A Court of Mist and Fury. Um, and there was one other reading thing. Oh, I need to start Little Women because the first pattern for Stitching Book Club came out on Friday. Um, Let's be real, I'm not going to get to the stitching anytime soon, but I want to at least read so that I can keep up with the discussion. So, that's about it. Watching. I actually did some. After my nerd twin got on my case a little bit. Not so much like angry get on my case, but just looking at me like, how? How could you have missed these things? Um, so I watched the first episode of Loki on, t I'm on time and keeping up with the television show for the first time, like probably since before I was in law school. Um, so gay, uh, that's not true. I used to keep up with the flash pretty religiously until like the last couple of seasons. Um, but yeah, so I watched the first episode of Loki. I really liked it. I'm really excited to see how it continues. Uh, not sure how I feel about Owen Wilson as Agent Mobius, but I don't care. I don't care. It's Loki. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see it. And and I, I like that they've kind of already explained a little bit about how time works in the MCU more than like a better explanation than we got in the movies. So, and I can kind of already see how it's going to tie to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, I think. So yeah, I'm excited about that one. Uh, and the other thing that I did watched was I finished finally season three of Castlevania. And I got through those scenes. Whoa. Um, yeah. Not used to sex scenes in my animated shows, but I thought it was... I mean, it was it was important to the story. So I, I, I liked it. Um, yeah, so I got through season... Three and I started, I think I got through the first two episodes of season four. So I've got like eight episodes to go in Castlevania and then it's done. Um, that's really all I got done. Then the rest of the time I was watching uh, Floss Tube. I don't have anyone new for you this week that I haven't mentioned before, but I do have one thank you. Uh, Nicole Stitches, who, if you haven't watched her yet, she's a relatively new fi uh, floss tuber. I think that was her episode five, maybe. Um, she does a lot of fun projects. Her work on Dark Queen of the Seas is just gorgeous. Um, but anyway, she gave me such a nice shout out. Um, I really appreciated it. I wasn't expecting it. Like, I'm just going along and watching and all of a sudden, like, there's my name. And, um, she said she likes you too. 
but she likes me, so I win that one. Sometimes I think people just watch for my dog. I would just watch for my dog. So anyway, Nicole, thank you so much. I really appreciated it. Uh, for the rest of you, if you haven't checked her out, please do. Um, as I said, I didn't pick up anyone new this week just because I didn't have time. I'm still about five or six days out. So the people that I regularly watch, if you've released something new within that period of time, um, I just haven't gotten to it yet. I try to always leave a comment on everybody that I watch, just so you know I was there because I know how much I like it when I get comments. So um, yeah, it just means I haven't been there yet and I'll get there. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's all I have for you this week. Um, Coming in at 46 minutes, that's short for me anymore. Um, still longer than it should have been with only five whip or four whips and a finish. But I mean, I don't know when to shut up. So sorry, not sorry. I mean, that's the way I am. Um, but yeah, that's it for this week. Uh, next week. Next week should be a normal week. It's the week after that when things start getting funky. No, no. People are going to need to remind me. Just give me a shout on Instagram at some point this week and say, hey, Carrie, don't forget you're going to do a whip parade next week, right? Right. Um, so next week, whip parade, if I remember. Um... You'll get your regular whip update too. Uh, so you'll see the four or five projects I'm working on, but then you'll see all the rest of them too. Um, I might even pull out my long-term timeout ones because someday I will finish those, maybe. So next week, whip parade. The week after that is probably gonna be another short, sweet one. And then the week after that, there will be nothing because I'm going to try a two-week schedule for a month or two and see how I like it, how you like it, Please, throughout the process of me experimenting with this stuff, give me feedback. Um, I've said before, I do this for me. I'm a lot more comfortable in front of the camera than I used to be. Um, I still have some of my issues. I forgot to give you a life update. And it's kind of an important one. I will finish the statement I just made. Um, I do a lot of this for me, but it's really no fun if nobody's watching and if nobody's commenting and interacting. So please tell me what's working for you and what's not, and we can kind of find our, our stride kind of together. Okay. Life update. I had a really good week until Thursday? Thursday. I had a really good week. Um, my, I'm on a specialty team at work and we had basically been shut down for like four months because a lot of the supplies that we needed were being diverted for COVID testing labs. But we now have enough supplies back in so we were able to start that team back up and I got to run the first week um, so I had a good week. It was fun to be back doing. That is probably my favorite part of my job. Um, so it was fun to be back doing that and it just put me in a super good mood. And then Thursday happened. Hey y'all, so there's no easy way to edit that whole section uh, that was about to start. And I decided after I recorded it that I wasn't going to put it in the video because it actually has to do with some other people that may not want their business out there. Um, so yeah, Thursday happened and I got some kind of bad news. <laughs> um, and I, that's really all I can say about it at this point and I probably shouldn't have even mentioned it at all because like I said, it actually um, involves some other people that I don't know that they would be comfortable with me having that information out there. Um, but if you do um, 
have some positive thoughts to send my way, uh, we would probably really appreciate that is pretty much all I'm going to say about it at this point. Um, and if it becomes important to like things that are going on uh, with my floss tube and my stitching later, I will let you know what I can. Seems like it's a, way, a horrible way to end on a downer, right? But I also didn't want to put it earlier in the video either because I'd like them to try and be fun, as much fun as I can offer you with my weird and awkward and sense of humor and disjointed blah, whatever. Um, I think she's out for the night. But anyway, I literally finished Defying Gravity. I'll show you one more time. There it is. Um, I literally finished it right before I started recording. So my Thai food that came right as I was finishing it is getting cold, waiting for me to come in and edit this. Um, so I'm gonna go eat some Thai food. And Lexi's gonna go bag for Thai food, but it's got chicken in it, so she can't have it. Um, so yeah, that's it. I will see you all next week, I hope. Um, I hope that you liked things enough to stick around. Uh, if you haven't already and you are so inclined, feel free to like or comment or subscribe. Uh, particularly, I love comments. Uh, I love getting a chance to chat back. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions you want. And that's it. Stay safe, stay healthy. See you next time. Bye!